Good evening. If um, you could make your way into the centre seating area, closer to the front. It's um, an hour in this session, and then you'll be going downstairs to the middle school breakout area. So, girls, if you could bring your parents into the centre areas, that would be helpful. Many seats down the front if you're looking for a seat. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and students. We might make a start um, because we do have a fairly um, busy schedule ahead of us because after this session here, we will be moving down into the middle school um, classrooms downstairs where you'll get to um, listen to the heads of department for the various subject areas. But firstly, um, I'd just like to introduce to you Ms. Laura Duffield, our Dean of Teaching, Learning and Innovation, who will be presenting to you tonight, who many of you um, have come into contact with when we did the Year 9 into 10 subject selection evening and information um, about the various at the beginning of the year when we did um, an intro to Year 10 and Senior School. But I'd just like to, um, before we start, just to make mention of the fact that you're a very lucky year because you're the year that's going to move into the new ATAR system. And I say that you're lucky because what sits behind the preparation and planning that has gone into getting Somerville House ready for um, as we move into this new arena um, has been fantastic and we're way ahead of the game in terms of what we, we're doing and the information that's been shared across the various members of the community as well as the combined effort of our heads of department and our teachers in getting everything up and running so that we're well and truly on board with all of the new um, QCAA syllabuses as well as the ATAR system. So some of which Laura is going to share with you today, some of tonight, some of the information, and then there'll be plenty of questions um, available downstairs, but also we will also be um, available um, in the area downstairs if you want to ask us questions. I'd also like to take the opportunity to introduce our Dean of Academic Planning, um, Ms. Jo Bennett, and thank Dr. Goodwin for being present this evening and we're available for questions after this session. So I'll hand over to Laura and all the best with tonight's um, subject information. Thanks, Mrs. Harris, and uh, welcome everyone, and particularly welcome to our Year 10 um, students here tonight. Uh, the Year 10s have been hearing uh, information about uh, all of the different subjects uh, that are offered here at Somerville House, and they will continue to receive information as part of our Year 10 My Academic Path 
program that we have every fortnight, but it's great to see them here with you this evening because there's a lot of information to cover. As Gail said, an exciting time moving into the new system. Uh, and so we're going to provide you with as much information as we can this evening. So this evening, um, we're going to be covering uh, the key information about the new QCE system and apologies to those who may have heard that already uh, once or twice before, but it is important information about um, the certification that your daughters will be working towards during year 11 and 12. We'll be talking about academic program requirements here at Somerville House, uh, what elective options your daughter will have in year 11 and 12 and of course our heads of department will provide a lot of information for you downstairs at seven o'clock so I do need to uh, keep my eye on my um, timer here um, excuse me if I stop every so often and look down because I do need to make sure I keep to about 45 minutes if there's not time for questions at the end of this session, which there may not be, um, please make sure that you um, see either Joe Bennett, Gail Harris or myself downstairs and we'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you have, but there may be some time at the end. I also um, would like to welcome from afar our boarding families. There may be some of you here this evening and if you are, wonderful, welcome. Um, but this is vi being videoed especially for our boarding families and at some point in time they will be watching so we uh, welcome them as well. Um, We'll be talking about uh, what are the requirements for a Queensland Certificate of Education, what are the requirements for an ATAR, what are our school requirements and most importantly, um, how can your daughters submit their subject preferences to apply for their subjects for next year. So there are two um, government, state government um, organisations or institutions that will be directly uh, over, um, involved in your daughter's senior education. One is the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority and the other is QTAC, Queensland Tertiary Admissions Centre. So I'll be referring to both of those this evening and you'll be hearing a lot about them uh, in the next two years and I'm sure many of you are already familiar with these uh, two organisations. They have had some shifting roles with the changes in the new system and so they are both responsible for distinct aspects of senior education in Queensland. So firstly the Queensland um, uh, Curriculum and Assessment Authority or QCAA is responsible for the uh, development of and oversight of uh, senior courses in Queensland schools. And they are also responsible for um, certifying students at the end of year 12 with a Queensland Certificate of Education. You often hear uh, people refer to the VCE in Victoria and the HSC in New South Wales. Queensland has got a QCE. Unfortunately, you don't hear much about it under the current system, but the new system will focus much more strongly on that. So your daughter will be studying her QCE as of next year. Um, so here, her, your daughter's year 11 and 12 academic program, uh, her main subjects will be working towards that QCE. And here at Somerville House, we aim that all students, by the time they finish year 12, are eligible to receive their QCE. Now, QCE eligibility uh, requires a minimum of 20 study credits. Most students will end up with substantially more study credits than that, but a minimum of 20. And there are some key requirements. Firstly, there is, um, uh, there is some uh, literacy and numeracy requirements and I'll speak to those in a minute once we get to uh, mandatory uh, studies in our senior program. Students must meet 12 study credits as part of their core program and the only things that those study credits com come from are completed units of work from um, subjects they study here at school or certain VET courses, a Certificate 3 or a Certificate 4, with a VET training provider. On top of their 12 credit points, they must have at least eight 
other points coming from either preparatory studies or complementary studies. Now outside we had a series of leaflets on the table and there is one for every family and that is from the QCAA and it actually outlines all of the requirements for a QCE so that is there for you. We also have additional copies of this that we will give out to the year 10s next week when we see them in my academic path. So please take one of these brochures. It does, um, it does explain what the requirements for Queensland Certificate of Education is. We also have electronic copy available on um, my Summerville in the senior curriculum page. And you will also find a copy of that document on the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority website under the new QCE um, button that they have there. Um, so to obtain credits, students must, um, uh, must achieve a minimum of a C or a sound, uh, what, what's equivalent to a sound achievement in uh, their units of work, in their subjects, in order to receive a credit. Or if those credits are coming from a VET or equivalent course or a uh, recognised studies course, um, students must have completed the entire course satisfactorily in order to gain um, one credit. And we work closely with the students over year 11 and 12. We monitor their QCE credits and making sure we're tracking those to ensure their eligibility. Um, with the core studies, as well as any additional credits your daughter will receive, here at Somerville House, your daughter will accrue those by the school subjects that she studies here. And these are all QCAA's um, syllabuses or the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority. In the new system, there are various types of subjects developed by the QCAA. Here at Somerville House, we will only be offering general subjects. They're referred to as general subjects and they are the um, subjects with an academic, um, uh, a more of an academic focus to them. Uh, and so they're the types of subjects that we're offering here at Somerville House. However, um, students may also um, combine some of their general subjects with enrolment in um, alternate course or a pathways course. So for many students, uh, enrolling in a particular type of um, certificate course, for example, if they really uh, want to pursue graphic design, uh, there may be a certificate three in graphic design that would work well for them and they might want to couple that with general subjects. Here at Somerville House, we will be offering a diploma of business that is um, offered by a private provider. However, we offer it here on campus after school, one afternoon a week. Currently, that diploma of business is only available to year 12 students. However, in the new QCE system, that diploma of business will be an 18 month course to allow students to meet all the requirements. So students must commence that course at the beginning of year 11 and take it through uh, all of year 11 and the first semester of year 12. So if students wish to incorporate that diploma of business into their uh, senior academic program, they will need to apply for that at the end of this year or no later than the first two weeks of year 11 next year uh, if they want to uh, apply. When we go downstairs, Miss Kate Graham, our Senior Pathways Coordinator and I, will be providing more information about that Diploma of Business, so you're more than welcome to come to those sessions. That Diploma of Business can be studied in conjunction with our other business course, an important course, and that is our general subject for business that sits with our Commerce Department. And again, Mrs McManus will provide information about that business course downstairs. So students can enrol in other courses. Now you will find in the subjects that we study here at Somerville House, our general subjects, there are a number of commonalities across every general subject. And the first one is um, the structure of those uh, courses. And you may have noticed that from the subject information booklet, all general subjects contain four units. Units one and two, 
uh, formative. That means uh, that the assessment contributes to our school reporting. It allows students an opportunity to build their knowledge and skills in readiness for the assessment in units three and four. And it will only be the assessment from units three and four that will contribute to a student's exit results at the end of year 12. So units one and two are formative, units three and four are summative. The other commonality that you will notice across every general subject is the embedding of really significant and important um, cognitive skills. These are the higher order thinking skills and the problem solving skills that are really crucial for students to develop, not only to uh, work with academic rigour, but also these are essential life skills and thinking skills that they will need to apply for the rest of their lives. And you will notice, and I'm, I'm sorry, some of these might be quite small, but they're listed in a variety of places, including your daughter's current um, student diary and on our website. But QCAA have identified these core cognitive skills and they are embedded in the teaching, learning and assessment of every um, general subject. So you will notice that in all the course aims and objectives, in all the assessment tasks, in all the marking criteria, these key cognitions play quite a crucial role. Teachers are working very hard with students to develop these key cognitions in, in their everyday learning um, so that they're able to apply them very effectively in their assessment during year 11 and 12. And, um, even in the middle school, our courses are changing so that they're embedding these skills. And of course, uh, this year in year 10, these are playing quite a crucial um, role in your daughter's um, current learning. So that's uh, one more commonality, just so that you um, um, are aware. Uh, with the assessment, as I said, all those cognitions are embedded in those assessments and um, even in the different variety of assessments that your daughter will come across in year 11 and 12, so exams, assignments, um, and any other forms of assessment that specific subjects might have. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, the assessment from units uh, one and two are formative. QCAA requires only two to four pieces of assessment during units one and two. Most subjects here at Somerville House have planned to do three assessments across units one and two, predominantly across terms one, two and three of year 11. Some of our subjects will have four assessments uh, in units one and two during year 11. Unit three and four have very prescribed assessment requirements and these uh, requirements are prescribed by the QCAA and I'll step through uh, those in a minute. Um, for units one and two, uh, units one and two, as I mentioned earlier, because it's formative, um, they will be school-based results that you receive for that. Students will now receive numerical uh, results for each of their assessment tasks, and all those numerical results will be added up uh, for units one and two and your daughter will be awarded an interim grade given to, provided to you by the school for each unit and that interim grade will be on an A plus to E minus scale just to provide um, uh, the students with some um, tracking information. We do need to report to QCAA about satisfactory completion of units one and two. However, we don't provide them with any of those numerical results or the A to E result. All we need to provide QCAA with for both units one and two as, is an indication of whether a student completed that unit satisfactorily or unsatisfactorily. So in other words, did they complete all the assessment requirements? Did they complete their assessment requir requirements to an appropriate standard based on the marking guides provided? <clears throat> Okay, for units one and two, um, Somerville House will be uh, covering those 
mostly during um, terms one, two and three in year 11. Now, as per, this is as per a number of other schools. Uh, we're making sure that those formative units still have a rigorous coverage, so they will still have rigorous coverage, but we are accelerating the learning in that. Um, and already students through their year 10 courses are laying the foundations that they need for those two units of work in year 11 and 12. Now, even if your daughter is currently doing a subject that she may not directly be doing in year 11 and 12, she's still having really important um, skills being, um, uh, um, being built in terms of assessment, assessment requirements and those uh, all important key cognitions uh, that are assessed um, during units one and two. So units one and two will be completed by early term four next year. And that is so that um, the school can, can then commence the summative units three and four. So I guess the implication there is unlike the current system, units of work and, and um, unit, uh, units of work and assessment won't fall all very neatly into one term. And um, across Queensland, schools will be having to uh, spread units of work across school terms, across holidays. Um, units will commence at various times. And here at some of all House, as I said, we will be um, units one and two will take approximately the first term of units one, sorry, will take approximately the first term and a half. Unit two will take approximately the next term and a half so that unit three can commence early term four, year 11. Uh, and that is because the, the um, units three and four um, are summative. So they're the units we really want uh, our students to consolidate their learning in. Um, the teaching of units three and four will then be completed by the end of term three, year 12. Because students will only have three weeks in term four, year 12, prior to the external assessment, and that time we'll be focusing essentially on revision and consolidation. Okay. Assessment for units three and four, as prescribed by the QCAA, there are three internal assessments and one external assessment. Can I please just reiterate that yes, we are moving to an external exam system, but that is not driving the assessment in the new system. Um, for most subjects, that external examination will only be 25% of their total uh, result. In some subjects, it will be 50% and I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. But the three internal assessments will be just as important and will be equally weighted um, towards the external result. So it's, it, it's very important that students um, focus on all of their assessment, both internal and external. So for the internal assessments, um, Somerville House develops those. We submit those to QCAA who then endorse those assessment tasks before we administer them to the students. Uh, once they're admitted, administered to students, uh, Somerville House teachers will mark those internal assessment tasks. We provide the students with a, um, an interim result for those um, summative assessment tasks and that stays as an interim result until QCAA will confirm that result via their, uh, via their website. Students will have their own login page to their learning account. They will be able to access their individual confirmed results for the three internal assessment tasks and QCAA are aiming to have all of those results confirmed um, before students um, need to sit their external examination. The first round of confirming marks will happen towards the end of term one year 12. So that will be not long after the girls complete their first summative assessment task. However, the next round of confirmation of results will not occur for the second two tasks until the end of term three. So there will be one, at least one assessment task where students will receive an interim grade only, but they will need to wait some time before it is confirmed by QCAA. 
Um, all the senior assessment is, um, oh, sorry, all the um, summative assessment, and we will be using the same marking guides for units one and two as well. And um, some of these would be familiar to you already. Students are already um, using these um, uh, instrument-specific marking guides with their teachers, and teachers are using uh, this um, process to mark the girls' year 10 assessment. But the instrument-specific marking guides, and this is just uh, are just part of an example from one, um, and it really breaks down the criteria required for that task and the maximum number of results for that aspect of the work. And of course, uh, teachers then award a numerical grade for each of those aspects, and then that is totaled up um, to a numerical mark. Now, in most instances, most subjects, each internal assessment will be 25 marks, for 25% of the entire course. There are some subjects such as math, science and some of the arts where that, 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 um, they, they may be out of 20 or 30, for example, in some instances, and the heads of department will detail some of that information for you. Uh, the external assessment, as I said, will occur from week four uh, in term for year 12, there will be three weeks and two days of external examinations. The scheduling of those examinations will be done by the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority. We will have no control over that. Um, those examinations are developed by the QCAA and marked by the QCAA. However, they will be administered here at Somerville House. Um, and as I say, for most subjects, um, that final external examination will contribute 25% towards their exit results. In uh, maths and science subjects, it will contribute 50% of students' overall results. Now, in uh, most subjects, the external exam will cover the learning from Unit 4 only. In maths and science subjects, it will cover the learning from units three and four. And for arts subjects, it will be 25%, but it will cover the learning from units three and four. So there are some implications there about students developing their ability um, to keep their learning ongoing. Uh, not to compartmentalise it each time a topic is finished, but they will need to build uh, fairly continual revision skills supported by their teachers. They will um, often have to go back and revisit concepts that they've been taught previously so that they are uh, able to carry their learning through. And as I mentioned earlier, it won't neatly fit into terms. There may be some school holidays or some study breaks where students will need to undertake certain set tasks so that during that study break they will be able to continue their learning um, where they uh, pick up where they left off prior to the holidays commencing. So it will require some ongoing, um, some ongoing learning from students. Um, just very quickly about results and certification. Um, QCAA will then add up the four raw results from the three internal tasks and the one external task, and that will be a result out of 100. QCAA will then convert that result out of 100 to an A, B, C, D or E. Now, the cutoffs for those will be determined each year by the QCAA. Um, based on the results of that particular year. That A, B, C, D or E in each subject will be your daughter's exit result. Um, and that's the exit result that will go on her senior statement. Uh, your daughter will be able to ac access her results at the end of year 12 um, through her uh, QCAA online learning account. And she will also receive a senior statement which will outline uh, all of the units of study that she did and of course her results for units three and four and the satisfactory um, completion of units one and two. Um, QCAA will also issue your daughter with her Queensland Certificate of Education. 
So, before I move on to tertiary entrance, which is a consideration as well, just to outline the program, academic program requirements here at Somerville House. Students have an option and the vast majority of students will undertake a program of six general subjects. However, for some students, combining four or five general subjects with a diploma or uh, with a VET course, such as the Diploma of Business or some other certificate course, will be a very viable option for them to move them forward into the future. Um, we do require students to do six subjects, even though the minimum requirement was 20 credits towards a QCE, because we want well-educated young women and young women with a, a breadth and a depth of academic knowledge and academic skills. Uh, there are certain mandatory studies as part of the Year 11 and 12 program here, and um, most importantly is our Christian Education program, which does continue into Year 11 and 12. Now, that is a school subject only. It does not contribute towards QCE credits or, or any kind of tertiary entrance. However, it's a very important and valued subject in the school and your daughter will have some in-school reporting on that subject. Core physical education too, also important and a very good way for the students to work together as a whole cohort team in a different way by participating in their core PE programs, so they are mandatory. Now, because of those literacy and numeracy requirements, that are listed for the new QCE. We do require students to take one English subject and one mathematics subject. So for English here at Somerville House, in addition to um, our general English that we'll be offering, uh, we are also introducing a new subject to Queensland. We're introducing the general syllabus for literature. Students can either take English or literature as their main uh, literacy subject in year 11 and 12. However, they can opt to do both if they're very avid readers and lovers of literature. They can opt to do both. Um, the two mathematics options as part of the mandatory studies uh, component, students um, can elect to take general mathematics. Now, I guess in a way, general mathematics is taking the place of the current Mathematics A, slightly different syllabus, and Mr Redmond, our head of mathematics, will be going through that with you downstairs. Or um, students can opt to take a higher level mathematics as their mandatory studies option by taking um, math, um, mathematical methods. Um, however, there are some prerequisites around some of those subjects, and I'll cover that in a minute. In addition to those, um, to their main literacy subject and their main numeracy subject, students can elect um, up to four, four um, general subjects or um, two more general subjects and take up their pathways option. Listed here and in the booklet are all the elective subjects that we're doing here at Somerville House. There's quite a broad range across the key, uh, the key learning areas across the arts, um, commerce, social sciences, um, health and physical education, um, and so on. Apologies, Hods, if I've missed your learning area out, but there's a number of them. I just want to highlight a few, and the first one is literature. If students have elected English uh, as their main literacy subject, they can do lit literature, as I mentioned before. However, there is a prerequisite result attached to literature. Um, there is a higher mathematics option as an elective. It's called a specialist mathematics, and I guess that would be uh, replacing what's now uh, currently known as mathematics C. Um, and of course, students can take the general subject business, even if they are undertaking the diploma of business, they can study those two um, courses in conjunction with each other. And you'll notice there for those musicians in the room who are undertaking music for four units, um, they can also pick up music extension. However, that must be studied um, concurrently with um, units three and four of the music. Course. So there'll be plenty of time when we get downstairs and sorry, I'm just checking the time because I've got 10 minutes left, I think. So um, 
I just need to move through the rest fairly quickly. I just want to cover a few bits of information about tertiary entrance because this is where your daughter's uh, senior academic program is leading her uh, and that's towards her university studies. Mrs Nairi Hatsumahale, who is our student, uh, sorry, our um, student councillor for tertiary entrance um, has apologised for this evening. She had a clash with another event. However, she speaks with the year 10 girls quite regularly in our My Academic Path program and a number of girls probably have already had an appointment with her. Some of you may already have met with her as well. But she is always very happy to make an appointment with either your daughters or your daughters and yourselves to start planning um, um, pathway towards tertiary studies. Now, as you are aware, currently um, the, the current OP system will be changing and will no longer apply when your daughters are at the end of year 12. Instead, we are moving to an ATAR, that is an Australian tertiary admissions rank. Now, the Australian tertiary admissions rank will fall under the responsibility of QTAC, the Queensland Tertiary um, admissions Centre. So QTAC will be calculating the ATARs in Queensland. It will be the primary mechanism for tertiary entrance into uh, universities in Queensland from 2020. And of course, that then aligns us with many other states in Australia. Uh, it is a ranking. Uh, your daughter's results will be that A to E that she receives for each of her subjects from the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority. Um, the ATAR is a ranking that universities will use to offer places to students in Queensland. Unlike our current OP, which is only a 25 point scale, the ATAR is a 2000 point scale. Um, it starts at 99.95 and goes down in 0 0.05 increments. Um, so the ATAR, sorry, I'm just scoot, um, scoot, scooting ahead, as I said, is done by QTAC um, and it will be uh, calculated based on students' raw subject results. Those subject results out of 100 will be passed over from QCAA to QTAC and then QTAC will, um, will calculate all the ATARs from there. I will talk about intersubject scaling in a moment. However, there are a couple of requirements to be eligible to receive an ATAR. One is, again, a minimum of uh, 20, um, similarly to our 20 um, um, credits at the moment. Um, the ATAR will be calculated on five subjects so, for example, five general subjects, so your daughter's best five results from her raw scores out of 100. Or alternately, an ATAR can be calculated from four subjects plus a VET course. So a certificate three, a certificate four, or a diploma course will also contribute towards an ATAR. Um, students must study an English subject for four units to be eligible for an ATAR. So they must continue their English or their literature studies right throughout to the end of unit four to be eligible for their ATAR. Now, although um, QTAC will only use the results from five subjects, um, they are um, they are indicating that the best possible ATARs will come from a combination of five subjects. And really, um, I would suggest that maintaining studies in six subjects, because we never know, we don't have a crystal ball, we don't know what those results will be at the end of year 12, and having that safety net set of results um, can be very helpful to most students. So maintaining six subjects or equivalent will be um, a most helpful way to um, maximise students' um, ATAR. Um, but more importantly, it also gives that really breadth and depth of academic learning, which is really important. Um, 
At the moment, now some of you may have had a, a sons or daughters go through and currently at the moment they can use um, an AMEB qualification that provides them with a selection rank that will articulate them into university studies. Uh, um, that will no longer apply in, um, from 2020. So school students can use a certificate or diploma course that will contribute towards their ATAR, but they will no longer be able to use um, AMEB qualifications as a primary mechanism for entering tertiary education. Now, there will be um, inter-subject scaling in the calculations of the ATAR. Um, it, it will be a different approach. Um, even QTAC will not know how subjects are definitively going to be scaled before 2020. Each year, they will determine um, how subjects are scaled based on that year's um, subject results. So uh, there will be no data about subject scaling for the new ATAR system, or for the new ATAR, sorry, prior to 2020. We will not have any data. Our QTAC will not have any data about that. However, they have just published um, a document um, called Intersubject Scaling and Introduction. Now, we don't have these printed out for you this evening, but we have made it available on our Somerville House um, website. You can download that PDF. It's also available on the QTAC website under ATAR. You will find that document. And that will give you a general overview of what the scaling process is going to be. So um, I would encourage you um, to read that. However, it will be important to note that um, students should not be selecting their subjects solely on how they think a subject may or may not scale uh, in the ATAR calculations when they leave school. As, um, as recommended by both the Queensland Curriculum um, and Assessment Authority and, um, and QTAC, the most important reasons for choosing a subject are these. Are they subjects you are most interested in? Are they the subjects that you have your current academic strengths in? So the ones that you know you can achieve your very best in. Everyone has different skills and abilities. Uh, students are at different stages of their cognitive development and their learning. So choosing subjects that are the best fit will be important. Now, there's also um, the consideration of what subjects might you need to start heading you towards the university courses that you might be um, that you might be interested in. For example, even if students are con may contemplate sometime in the future um, picking up um, primary teaching or early childhood teaching, they will need a science subject as a prerequisite for those courses and of course there are quite a number of um, subject as courses in the STEM area that will require prerequisites. So um, thinking about those will be important. I'll come back to prerequisites in a minute, however. Um, Mrs. Hatz Mahal has recommended three main websites where you can obtain information about university entry in various parts of Australia. The most important, of course, being QTAC. Um, all of this, this presentation and all of these links will be available to you on the Somerville House um, website under the Senior School Curriculum page, so you'll be able to access the links there. Students have already been given some information about university prerequisites and they were given information on careers day. Now, there's some other important considerations. Um, to ensure that your daughters um, will select subjects that are the best fit for them in year 11 and 12, uh, there are some, we, we do have some year, year 10 result and course prerequisites for certain subjects in year 11, and that will include uh, literature, the higher mathematics, such as mathematical methods and specialist mathematics, and also physics and chemistry. And those prerequisites are listed in the subject information booklet that you have. Um, and um, 
uh, the only, uh, and also in some instances, uh, your daughter may be eligible to undertake a year 11 subject, but um, based on her um, year 10 results, um, to, again, to ensure best fit, um, we may give your daughter provisional enrolment in that subject for unit one in some instances, and then your daughter will receive full enrolment for the subsequent units um, based on her results from unit one. Um, so, that, um, so that in some instances only, a provisional enrolment may be applied. Um, another important question you might be asking um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I've just talked about um, provisional enrolment and full enrolment. Can your daughter change subjects once she starts year 11? I strongly encourage, and, and the school strongly encourages everyone to um, really consider their year 11 subject um, preferences carefully and apply for subjects that they know are definitely going to be best fit right from the start of Unit 1. Um, it's going to be increasingly difficult in the new system to change subjects after Unit 1 has been completed. And in fact, QCAA recommends that both Units 1 and 2 are studied prior to Units 3 and 4. So maintaining their subjects as much as possible will be important. Really careful considerations will be needed. Should a student need to change a subject, if the circumstances um, really indicate um, perhaps it wasn't the best fit for that student, um, students will be able to change subjects at the end of Unit 1 only. After that, they're pretty much locked into their subjects for the following three units. Um, that will be around about the middle of Term 2, Year 11, and we'll give you plenty of information about um, that subject change processes should it, be, um, uh, should it be recommended for your students. So, submitting your preferences for students, and I'll be getting the wind up in about five minutes here. Um, this evening on the table, um, there was a, a, you should have received your own personalised um, information leaflet. Inside that leaf leaflet will be your daughter's login information for submitting her preferences. So if you haven't yet collected that leaflet, can I please ask you to do so when we move downstairs so that you have that login information. Um, if for some reason your daughter misplaces that um, or the dog eats it or it accidentally uh, gets a cup of coffee spilled over it, um, please don't panic. If you contact or your daughter comes to the curriculum office or uh, you contact the curriculum office, we can certainly provide you with those login details again. Uh, you, can access, um, you can access your subject preference login from the main page of my Somerville. You will see a link there that you can click on. And all of these instructions, by the way, will be provided to you in the booklet. Uh, once you have um, accessed that, you can... Um, Enter your login information and then you click on um, the submit the um, add new preferences button. You'll see that it's already uh, set up once you start to log in, uh, where students can elect either the six subject, six general subjects option or they can elect a combination pathways option where they can combine general subjects uh, with another pathways option. So they click on either one of those, whichever is their um, preference. And then once they get in, you, you'll see that um, the first thing they need to fill in is which of the two um, mandatory studies options for English are they going to choose, English or literature? Which of the two mandatory mathematics um, options are they going to choose, general mathematics or mathematical methods? And then underneath that, they elect four preferences. Now, please, Put your preferences in, in your order of preference, um, the ones you really want to do the most at the top and so on. And you do need to um, put in a reserve subject as well. The school works very hard and this will be Ms. Ms. Bennett will be working very hard to ensure that every student uh, gets their preferences. However, there are 
um, on the odd occasion, given timetabling constraints, etc., it may not be possible for every student to have all of their uh, preferences. And of course, we need to ensure that students are meeting uh, the requirements and recommendations for those subjects to ensure best fit. Okay, so then it's just a matter of following the prompts of choosing their subjects and then you'll see a button uh, eventually once you've chosen those um, to proceed um, and then you must click on that green button that says submit preferences. Please don't assume that just because you can see all your preferences that you have actually submitted them. That green button submit preferences is important and then it will come up with a preference receipt which you can print out and sign. Please return that signed um, receipt to the curriculum office and the due date is there uh, on the information provided to you. I think it's the um, that, that will remain open until Friday the 17th of August and then if you can return your signed preference sheet um, by Monday, um, that can either be scanned and emailed to the curriculum office or uh, your daughter can drop it off in hard copy to the curriculum office. So that's just a really rough quick overview of how to actually submit your preferences. We do have subject information available for you on our website. There's always the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority website. There is the QTAC website as well. And for the rest of the evening, um, heads of department will be able to provide you with subject specific information, 15 minute sessions. Um, we only have about six or seven minutes to move downstairs to those relevant rooms. The schedule is up on, uh, out in the foyer, but there's plenty more copies downstairs. Uh, it is two floors down. Um, as students can lead the way, we're heading to level three in E block. You can go down the stairs either side from the foyer there, and please go straight to the rooms of the subjects that you would like to hear from. Um, please see us if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thanks for the applause, girls. <laughs>